All right, find ourselves today in Pumpkin Center. And it's Pumpkin, as in P-U-N-K-I-N. Pumpkin Center, Arizona, nice little town. We're going up in them hills. So we're heading into Tonto National Forest. And uh, this is a loop. I was uh, doing some research in my GPS files and I found this one at the bottom of the bag. And did this one about nine, 10 years ago. And uh, it was, uh, shown to me by a buddy of mine, Dave, who, uh, he's a, uh, or was a, he's a retired, uh, Phoenix Police Department officer and a, uh, former motor cop. So, pretty cool little, uh, adventure here. Let's see, some fun facts about today. We're at uh, 3,200 feet of elevation, which is kind of the high part of the desert. Probably tell by the vegetation. We are 25.8 miles from the nearest Starbucks and 24.6 miles to the nearest convenience store. We're pretty remote today. We're gonna take a left here, but we're gonna come back on that side. I just wanted to spin around here. I wasn't sure whether to come back this way or go out this way. This is the kind of the way I went the first, the uh, last time or whatever. But uh, the view off of here is really incredible. There's the mountains down there, right off of where my finger is, is uh, Pumpkin Center, tiny little town. Very nice, a little uh, smoky today. Uh, to our south at Mount Ord, in that area, there's a fire down there. You can tell, but we are uh, gaining elevation like a madman. If you notice the uh, mountain behind us or in front of us on the way up, in six miles, we're almost to the top of it. It's about six miles of hill climb all the way.
Okay, just eight miles. And hopefully you can see how, how much hill that was. Pretty much uphill for eight miles. And eight miles from desert to pine trees. And we've gained 53, or I'm sorry, um, 2,300 feet in height. Elevation, sorry. So the mountain we just crossed it is called uh, Bearhead Mountain. I'm assuming because the peak looks like a bearhead. I didn't see it, but then again, I was busy. Well, maybe you guys have noticed, or maybe you haven't. I'm not doing any off bike shots. Uh, because there's two stops that I want to make that I want to get on on film and uh, hopefully you like those and it's not really about the training I'm, I'm riding on it's more about the uh, the scenery not that we're in anything but pine trees right at the moment hopefully you enjoyed the ride up the hill And not that you can't use uh, off bikes for uh, panorama, but I'm trying to keep these uh, down to a sane number of minutes so people actually watch them and see the content that I'm uh, trying to get out there. Whoa, there we go. We're at the top of something. up or down from the horizon you'll see mountain line line not line um, and I, that's where the smoke's coming from actually I actually can see a column of smoke out there so I believe that's the Mount Ward area blowing back this way nice sandy loose downhill Come back out of the pines anyway. Funny how you block things out of your memory. I don't remember it being this fisty rocky. Well, sure looks like fall's coming. The leaves are starting to tinge of yellow. Oops. Someone's campsite. I'm trying to find the right way up there. I was looking at this fence here. I couldn't see the opening. I could see the sticker there. Looks like we got a little uphill ahead of us.
Yeah, there was uh, baby head sized rocks and baby sized rocks. And I do remember this plateau being a burn area and it was just covered with trees. You had to hop the trees. It was like one every 10 yards or something. Everybody okay upstairs? Our first stop's gonna be a lava tube. It is a mile and a third long, something like that. If it's not too slick in the beginning, we may try to get down in there and get some uh, get some footage but uh, these cameras are rigged for low light not no light and there's uh, zero light down there and even with a flashlight and a headlamp it's gonna be pretty pretty difficult to get uh, anything that's watchable So our roots just been keeping us right at the peaks of these mountains. Just going in and out of the saddles. This must be another burn area. Kind of surreal looking. Right over. This is it here somewhere. Our weapons of choice here. We're gonna go see if we can't find that uh, that lava tube. I think the best way to do that is on the helmet cam, so I'm not holding that on top of the flashlight. And uh, hopefully we can see something. Well, there she is, right down there. We'll have to walk around the path. Get in. There she is. Now there's bats and I think porcupine, all kinds of stuff in here. So this, this thing's like a mile and a third long. And like I said, we may just go in the entrance here. Someone's got himself some wall built over there. I know there's a pretty steep descent right in the beginning here somewhere that uh, probably not good for motocross boots. But this here is a good old fashioned lava tube. And it's a big one. This one I think is bigger than the, uh, at least the entrance is bigger than the uh, one over in uh, Coconino. Not one you can get to with your car. spare light here. Some double trouble here. So from 
floor level to ceiling level. That's like it's like 20 feet. Hope you guys can see some of this. There are some walls in here, and I'm not sure if those are. I haven't seen anything that would tell me that those are made by uh, Native Americans or just people that are in here messing around. Looks like there was some evidence of a fire there at one time. So I came down here. But this was full of hot lava. And it keeps going. And I'm not going to spend my whole a lot of time in here but this is kind of get the idea and I'm not thinking you're probably seeing a whole lot maybe you are I hope you are but this is kind of what it is for a mile or so there's some rooms you can get into if you're super skinny you can squeeze in there and uh, I'm not sure if I can trust my good old flashlights at this point Just my uh, rechargeable shop lights, but they seem to work pretty good. This is the entrance. Pretty cool, huh? There's a whole map of this on the um, Coconino Forest website. Let's start our trek back up to the bike. Uh, my suggestion would be if you plan on taking this ride um, and there's easier ways to get here than where I got here um, is to bring along a set of hiking boots and uh, four or five flashlights with you and some water and stuff probably a sweater because that first leg is only about 35 degrees down in the tunnel so um, be prepared, but it would be a fun, fun hike. Well, I sure hope I got uh, at least some of the cave. If not, I'll just put some dark footage in there so you, you can tell I went inside the cave. <laughs> or tube, lava tube. So, on to our next quarry, which is uh, DuPont Cabin. As crow flies, it's about two and a half miles away, but that could be 10 the way things are, the way the roads are set up here. We're about 25 miles into our 45 mile loop. They're pretty interesting, a little bit of everything going on. Super steep mountain roads in the beginning that were uh, real loose rocky. Um, pretty easy forest roads that travel along uh, ridges and stuff like that. And uh, some uh, super technical rocky stuff and some two track that was so tight and skinny you could almost call it single track. <laughs> Very nice mix of stuff. Right in here somewhere. Yeah, see the roof. Big old tin roof right over there. All right. 
From what I understand and what I've been told, this is called DuPont Cabin, and it had something to do with the DuPont fa family, like the DuPont paints, chemicals, stuff like that, around the turn of the century, which um, at that point in time, hopefully there's no one squatting in here. Looks like there's a mattress. But uh, when everybody out there was mega rich, Vanderbilt and stuff like that, um, these guys came out here and built the cabin when everybody was in New England uh, building mega mansions and castles and stuff. So this was the, uh, it's like the main house, um, main living quarter, just a simple cabin. Looks like some shells. I mean, yeah, these got to be original. They're just pine poles. And you walk out into here. It's kind of like an outer portion of the cabin. This must have been another room. Maybe this was the bedroom area. Then there's a door there, and out there looks like a um, horse stall. Head back outside and take a look around. Well, certainly not luxury accommodations. This would have been this would have been fairly remote back in the day when they built it. Um, I mean, we're probably uh, 20 miles from Pumpkin Center, which is even today just a little tiny uh, podunk town, if you will. I don't think I want to go in here too much. Looks like it's collapsing. This wall's down. There's an old uh, workbench there. Yeah, someone was living in here. There's a dog kennel there. One time, um, I believe when we came out here last time, uh, you could stay in here. It's like a National Forest Service uh, overnight cabin. Looks like someone made it their home for a while. But uh, this would have been, you know, early 1900s. 1901 through the 20s, and, uh, Arizona was still, I mean, didn't become a state till 1912, and uh, it would have been still kind of a frontier environment for sure. Here's a secondary structure. This might have been a kid's cabin. Doesn't look like a outhouse, maybe a tool shop or something like that. Definitely collapse the roof materials all strewn all over the place. Alright, that's DuPont Cabin. And uh, get back on the bike here and head on our way. Well, goodbye, DuPont Cabin. And make our way back down the hill. Vista for you. Truck's over there somewhere.
I have a horn. Well, I appreciate you watching Officer Dave's Wild Adventure. Thanks, Officer Dave, for so many years ago showing us the way around this awesome loop and letting me get some really cool tracks to go ride. And I appreciate everybody watching. Thank you for your time watching my videos. Please comment, subscribe, like, and share. Adios.